where we left off yesterday. And I'm gonna just I'm just gonna share a thought just at the moment. Where because is he? thinking about this yesterday, it made me realise it feels incredibly similar to the intro or the first act of Baldur's Gate 3, where you come off it's an airship, but there's a shipwreck, ship crash. You end up on the strange shores of some land looking for your or looking for the people who then become your party members who were present on the ship that crashed. You explore strange places, find strange things, and eventually come upon a town, a big town gate that's uh, well, it's under siege, but it's guarded, and inside are strange people giving you quests. It feels almost identical to this. It just really struck me yesterday, and yes, it's made by the same company, um, and it's a totally different rule set, but it just has such a similar feel to this. Kind of funny, kind of funny. Hey Nicodemus, I'm good today, thanks, how are you? Really happy to be back playing this, because I am quite excited for it. Come on, Nick. Oh, it's... Hang on, these are, these are other... I find any bread. I these are... Okay, no, just, just Ifen. Just Ifen. This is not your business, Long Pig. I thought they were all the people from the ship, but I think it's... I think it's only... Is it Ifen? I think he's the only one that was there. Long pig, thank you very much. Don't let this moss muncher talk to you like that. Oh God. Especially oh God. a cheapskate like this and Griff already knows she don't like to pay her fair share. I think I've walked into a domestic here. Hey Wickrack, at least I weren't shipwrecked with amnesia. No. <laughs> I might as well be. I don't seem to know any special skills to start with. An intense looking man steps between the thug and the elf and rolls up his sleeves, revealing well muscled and heavily scarred arms. You recognise him. It's Ifan, who you met aboard the ship on the thought way it here. was. Damn this cable. Ifan, I thought it was Ifan. Just stand aside, won't you, mate? This is no business of yours. Lone wolves decide their own business. We've got to have Russell Crowe in the party. It's not, that's not negotiable. The thug freezes in fear for a moment before shuffling back to the protection of his crony. What's he got on his back? Is that like a harp or something? It's a big crossbow. Or an arbalist, or something like that. Pay up, elf. No one shorts Griff, especially not one of you. Hmm. Ask after this Griff. Runs the kitchen. Means he runs me, you, and everyone else in camp. Ask why the elf owes him money. Everyone in camp's got to contribute. For food, for protection. No exceptions, especially not for elves. That sounds rather racist. Griff's orders. A rather attractive elf. Food, protection, I have neither. Hmm. This sounds like little more than a shakedown in disguise. You two ought to be thanking your lucky gods it's us and not the magisters enforcing round here. A fool. Never knows what they've got till it's well and gone. Now, come on, Elf. If you make me say it again, there's going to be trouble. Ask a barbarian. I'm going to do this. I am, for some reason, I am a barbarian soldier. And the barbarian options in chat are awesomely blunt and to the point. Do you really want to lose your life over a few coins? Burrow looks you up and down, sizing up your threat. <laughs> I've got a bucket on my head. I must look really intimidating. <laughs> Ah, get out of here. <coughs> the both of you. You ain't worth a sweat of my brow anyhow. Should have had a fight, really. The elf smiles and bows to you in thanks. Follow me before more of them trouble us. Ooh. There is a safe place. Where are we going? I, I need to talk to Ifen. But I better not lose where the elf is going either, so... I can now use waypoint travel. Is this Griff Melody? Oh, interesting. So it's put Griff as a marker on the map. Once I've found out where she's gone, I'm going back to talk to Ifen straight away because I kind of want him in the party. Wait a minute. No, she wasn't. I thought... I wonder if she's somehow related to the elf. There's a cavern entrance. Ah, I think I know where that cavern goes. There's a doctor. 
Uh, okay, well, we found where to go, so that's good. Do we... How do I... Oh, I see. A little reprieve from the din outside. Ah. This is going to lead out the other side. And there's going to be a dead elf on the beach, I think. Thank you for your help with that, thug. Rare is the human who goes against their own for an elf. Uh, I was happy to help. She bows. She's selling a mushroom, a long branch, and a bottle of water. Curious. Do you know a way out of the fort? I hear of no escapes. The only way out is through. Through the Magisters, through their cure. Thugs, I can stand, but oh, I fear the Magisters. Hmm. How did you come to Fort Joy? It gives me great pain. I'm with my family. We are making beautiful magic. We are healing a tree cut down with great violence. The Magisters come. My family runs, but I fall. My son looks back. I shout to him to run. I am taken. Okay, who's in charge around here? In this cave, we trust the healer. She is young, but she sees. She knows more than we know. In the camp, the brute Griff rules. He who gives the bread has the power. Wait, before you go, I am not here without your help. <laughs> I do not forget this. What? For you, a prize. I save it for a special occasion, but I can think of no finer occasion than this. Did you see what she just gave? She gave me a severed head. Thank you. I mean, is that the customary thing elves give to uh, <laughs> to people as a thanks? We just give them a box of roses, a box of chocolates. And yes, I did say a box of roses. For those not in the UK, you might be thinking I meant a bunch of roses, but roses are a brand of chocolate here. And the advert used to say, what was it used to go? It used to, it used to, it used to be make a big play of saying thanks for the box of roses. I'm not going to sing the songs; they were terrible. Choose my reward as well as a severed head. A two-handed axe at level two, a skull cap, wizard pants, which might be quite nice, or three physical armor. Um, two physical and two magic armor doesn't require anything. Well, that sounds. Well, they're not necessarily better because they protect from different things. This is something I'm learning about this game, which I, I quite like. I'll take the skull cap because... Oh, yes! I, I will take the skull cap because... And this is going to be a big improvement. I can now remove the bucket from my head. I'll stab you right in the eye. And it hides... <laughs> I've got to get rid of that hair because it looks so bad. Um, but skull cap, we now have an improved bucket status. And I won't use buckets on the other one because... He, I like the uh, Wayfarer class, I think. He wants the initiative, doesn't he? I don't want to lose initiative. But what is this? Sightless eyes stare at terror. Stare at terror at whatever horrors mark their last moments. Eat? I don't think I want to eat it. Very curious. Right, we'll come back to this cave in a bit because there's, there's looting quests or something else to, to do here. But, um, Ifen. I'm going for Ifen. I think she's got a funny way of speaking. I quite liked her voice. The compact's got its benefits. Oh wait, this this wasn't the way in. Hang on. Oh, hang on. How did this happen? This hole is too small for you to squeeze into. Oh, I see. Ah, now that's a nice feature then. So only the dwarf can fit through that. Um, where did he actually come through, though? He just appeared here. I can't see. Whoa, what the hell is this? Um, this looks highly dangerous. What's, uh, I've got to explore this. What, what is this? Oh, is this just back? An ancient stone hatch. Ah, um, hang on. What, can we all go down there, then? Can we all use the hatch? Right, so one fit through the hole. And maybe he opened the hatch up for the rest, I don't know. Let's see, this this might be... This might be instant death, because this guy has a lot of hit points. But let's go take a look. A bunch of nails. 
A well-worn chest. Ooh. Who said that? Was it him? A cup of tea? An empty cup? Is it him? You! Tell me true! Stand you with the source hunters, or do you serve the tyrant Bracchus Rex? He hasn't been around for a while, has he? The source hunters. Say this island hasn't belonged to Bracchus for a millennium. Do that one. It hasn't. The wicked king? He's dead? Oh, I, I definitely recognise this voice. Strange to think it's been so long since I've been trapped here. So long since I've seen a living soul. Why are you trapped here? A wicked king, it was. Bracchus Rex by name. The Order of the Source Hunters discovered a great horror upon this prison isle, and I was sent to stop it. Yet my failure was absolute. I am not fit to bear the insignia of the Source Hunters any longer. Please, good sir, you must free me. Prize this spear from my chest, where it has been stuck fast for the last thousand years. Seize the spear. End this degradation. I beg you. Do we trust him? Uh, an, an immortal corpse. Spear of Bracchus Rex. Well, that sounds like a nasty thing, doesn't it, sir? Uh, uh, good, sir. You have set my body free. Free to crumble to dust at last. But my spirit... Blast! I remain trapped in this mouldering skeleton yet. What binds you? A spell most terrible. I have heard of such magic, but have never known anyone so foul as to employ it. Bracchus Rex. May maggots lace his entrails. After he interred me in this cell, he must have drawn my very soul away from me and stored it elsewhere in the fort. Thus he has bound me entirely to the mundane realm. But I know this place well. I could lead you to its likely location. In turn, you would find a path straight out of this fort. Ah. My freedom for yours. What say you? Accept the exchange. Marvellous, my friend. Marvellous. You'll first have to get inside the fort itself. There's a secret switch on a statue of the Seven in the courtyard. Surely you know it. I didn't, but I do now. The switch will open a hatch, and you'll be led into the prison's main floor. I suspect that within Bracchus's phylactery room, you will find the container which ensnares my soul. He has likely disguised it well, but search there for another hidden switch. Bracchus would have made me a supplicant, a slave to these walls. With your help, I'll die. At last. With dignity. How do you know where your soul is kept? I was fully briefed about this awful place before I came. My goal was to destroy the fiend who had been marshalling the world's most unwholesome weapons and magic into an army he intended to use against the realm. I never thought I would become one of his victims. And yet, here I am. Is there anything more you can tell me about this place? Fort Joy is a dangerous place, my friend. Dangerous indeed. Bracchus used this place to build an arsenal of terrible weaponry as yet unseen in our world. Here, he and his researchers crafted punishments and snares contrary to human dignity. Objects that could contain souls. Ones that could purge the very essence from sorcerers. My order would never have used such barbaric magic against our enemies. Hmm. Yeah, that's what they all say. Okay. Oh, well, interesting. I did not expect that to come from here at all. An empty cup and a cup of tea. This looks like something's been taunting him. There's, he has a cup of tea. And someone's been visiting with an empty cup just to taunt him every week. Curious. Very curious. I don't know. What do you think, chat? I don't I don't fully trust uh, I don't fully trust this guy. But meanwhile, we will level up, which means I can now use I think I am level three. I can use this without penalty. This big Still, that that actually does eight to nine. Uh, 10 to 12 damage in total. This does 12 to 13. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's let's go for that. Accur accuracy at 95%. Excellent. I've got my big massive hammer. That's what we want. Um, what's this? Snakeskin armor. Ooh. 
plus one aero third. I might need to use that. Request finesse 10. That's fine. We can do it. We can go with that. Uh, let's put that on instead of your shirt. I didn't even see that I had that. I don't know where I got that from. Hmm. Well, the armor goes up. And we'll go to... I don't put too much on this guy because I think we're going to... We might just abandon him for use later in the story. I've also got the Spear of Bracchus Rex, which requires level 3. Uh, is that a finesse? Requires finesse 10. Well, it works. Set petrified for one turn. Set slowed for one turn. That's actually better than what I've got, so... And I don't have an issue with finesse at the moment, although I don't think I get the benefit from strength, do I? Does it say with my damage, damage 7 to 18 if I put this on? 17 to 20. It looks better, so we'll use that for now. Um, anyway, leveling up, leveling up. We kind of want to go... No, make sure we're on the right character here. We want to go all in strength, I think. I don't see any reason to use anything else. Mind you, having extra wits for initiative is, is never a bad thing. One point equals plus five percent damage. So I do that one. Twenty percent damage. Oh wait, have I got another stat? I've got another stat. Should I go all in on strength? Do these have strength requirements? Just that it requires strength ten. I wonder if I should start where <laughs> start boosting something else up. Um, vitality is never a bad thing. Base skill slots. I don't actually understand what that means when it says skill slots. It's not referring to those down the bottom of the screen, is it? You, you, you guys know what the difference is? Or what that actually refers to? Required to learn skills. Extra slots from memory. So I can have... If I increase my memory, does that mean... If we go to... Talents. Well... Actually, there isn't a thing called skills. Does it, is it referring to this? Skills, okay. So I can have four skill slots. Ah, does that mean I can spread them around in this? Okay. That doesn't require warfare at all, does it? No, this is, I think the warfare will require... Um, the requirements for that will be the warfare spells and abilities, I'm going to guess. I wonder if I should take something in anything else. 5% more magic armor from skills and potions. Interesting. Perseverance. Restores magic armor after you come from frozen and stunned. Oh, it only restores 5% of the armor, though. So you really have to build that one up. Leadership doesn't look bad. Two-handed. I just don't know what to spend these on. Warfare's not a bad thing, so... I'll put it in that, and later on we will know what we need to spend these on. Uh, so in that case, I think I'll just go with strength. Let's boost this up. 25% extra damage. I'll take that. And a talent. Oh, hang on. I, oh, I might need to read through these. All skilled up gives you one extra combat ability point and one extra civil ability point, which always sounds good. Um, arrow recovery. Bigger and better. Immediately grants you two extra attribute points to spend. The Comeback Kid. Once per combat, if an enemy lands a fatal blow, Comeback Kid will help you bounce back to life with 20% health. That's quite good. Elemental Affinity, Escapist, Executioner. Two extra action points after dealing a killing blow. Once per turn. Oh, that one's good. Oh, I did tell you what I'd want. We Opportunist straight away. Perform attacks of opportunity. Yep, let's put that straight in. Oh, we've got the thrifty one. I wonder where that come from. That must be from being human, I, I'm guessing, or background or something. Cool, right then. We will level up the other guys as well. I always like leveling characters up. So, this is my mage dude. We'll go for intelligence. Should we go for wits? Is this an initiative? Go on, we'll go for something in initiative as well. And in here, we're going to Pyrokinetic and Geomancer. I'll split them evenly. 
And in here, undead. Also, oh, hang on. Well, I don't know that I'm going to be using this character a lot. Stench. Decreases everyone's attitude towards you by 25. Okay, I remember that from the first one. Less likely to be attacked by melee opponents in combat. Torturer. Hmm, unstable. Makes you explode in a bloody cloud when you die. I don't think so. Reduces all status durations by one. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. What a rush. Increases your recovery and maximum action points by one when your health is below 50%. Parry master. Morning person? No. Mnemonic. Hmm. Hey, Tom. All good here, thanks. Although it is bloody cold here today. Don't know what it's like with you. It feels like it's gone back to winter. Not lone wolf. Living armor. Uh, leech. Leech heals you when standing in blood. Hothead. Hothead grants you 10% crit chance and 10% more accuracy when you're at maximum health. Gorilla while sneaking. Glass, glass cannon. You start every combat round with maximum AP, but magic and physical armor do not protect you from statuses. That is very dangerous. Escapist. Elemental affinity. It just lowers the action point cost of spells by one when standing in the surface of the same element. Well, not great for fire, is it? I don't want to be standing in a fire to start with. Character with demon has an extra 15% fire resistance, but takes 15% penalty to water resistance. Hmm. Big I might go with something. I mean, I'm not too... I don't know about any of these, to be quite honest. Savage Sortilege. Gives all magical skills a critical chance equal to your critical chance score. Is that good? What What is his critical chance score? It's 6%. But then casting these... Does that give them all a crit chance equal to that? I don't know. Hey, Avenji. Execution is really good for low initiative characters, so it can kill someone who's low in the end of the round. Ah, that's a good way of thinking about it. Well, that... So does that say that magical skills would not otherwise have a crit chance? Unless I take that. Because I wonder if I take that, could it potentially lower the crit chance if they already have an, an inbuilt crit chance? Or do they not have a crit chance? Or do they have a base 5% crit chance? I don't know. Maybe one to think of for the future. Stench might be good. <laughs> oh, this is, oh, this is Fane, isn't it? I've got to remember this isn't the Red Prince. This is Fane. Unstable. Walk it off's quite good. Oh, but it reduces... Oh, it reduces positive statuses as well. So that's not good. Do you know, some of these skills are just... Or talents, whatever they are. Just there to stiff you, I think. I might just take one of these. Uh, bigger and better. Two extra attribute points to spend. Mm, I'm going to go with all skilled up. And then... Probably regret it. But anyway, it, it is what it is. So let's go with uh, Pyrokinetic. And we've got an extra point in this. Oh, Lawmaster. Oh, Telekinesis. I want to start building both up, don't I? Mind you, Lawmaster is really good for spotting the resists. At least in the first game, you needed to have a certain level of Lawmaster to be able to see the resists on some of the bosses and, and characters. So oh, I think I should have a bit of Telekinesis as well, though. It's, re it's really hard to, to split between those. Uh, this guy, I'm not too not too fussed about, so we'll split those. He's a sword and board character. Doesn't look it, but he is. It is indeed a squirrel riding a cat. Yeah, I I don't know either. I I honestly have no idea what that's all about, but we will we will find out. Um, I've put leadership up on him. He's got one in dual wielding. Uh, he should probably go for warfare, really. Physical, and we can probably learn more warfare skills or retribution. Perseverance. Um, I don't know. I'll do that. He's going to be a bit of a team player. I'll try and do his quest line at some point. 
Um, what have we got here? The Executioner, you say. Two extraction points after dealing a killing blow once per turn. Hmm. Far out, man. Oh, increases the range. Ah, oh, now that's what I should have had in the Mage. I'll get that next time in the Mage. Increases the range of skills and scrolls by two meters. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's... It's a, it's a bit. The Hothead. Leech. When standing in blood. Which isn't a bad thing. I wonder if... For a melee character, do they often end up standing in blood anyway? Living armor adds 35% of all healing you receive by skills or consumables to your magic armor. That might be quite good. A parry master gives you 10% dodging or while dual wielding. I could... I was making them sword and board. I could make them dual wield. And that might be good protection. A picture of health. 3% extra health for every point in warfare. Could go with that. Stench torturer. Unstable. Walk it off. And what a rush. Because mm, they're going to be a melee character. I might go with that. Screw it. I'll stick that in. We'll pick up a different... Uh, bunch of things a squirrel riding a cat it's it's it, <laughs> it's bizarre right there's going to be something good for a wayfarer here there's arrow recovery recover that might be really good for the special arrows uh does far out man work on this it says increases the range of skills and scrolls so i think those well, it might it might it affect the range skills but maybe not the ranged attack itself while sneaking, Gorilla increases attack damage by 40%. Reduces the cost of entering sneak mode. That could be good. Oh, there's so many good things here. An opportunist. Parry master. Sling. Oh, that's grenade throwing. Hmm. Reduces the cost of using grenades and scrolls by 1 AP when your offhand is free. I think I'll go with arrow recovery. And we'll try. I don't know how many special arrows we'll find in this, but uh, that will allow me to play with them a bit more, I think. And a little bit more finesse and wits for initiative. I think we'll go with that. I think. Well, we'll soon. We'll know if I'm going down the right way with this or not soon. Uh, let's see. We've we got one point in here. Oh, range now covers everything. Oh, that's good, because before you had to choose between bows and crossbows, which was a hard choice. This now just covers everything, so we can switch freely around. I like that. Increases a crit chance. That would be a good one to go into. Huntsman is... All right, from attacking from high ground. Well, that's quite good. That is quite good. Warfare, physical damage. Scoundrel. Increases movement speed and boosts your crit modifier. Okay, I, there's, there's, there's things working differently in this. Uh, I'll put one in ranged for... This gives me... 5% damage. Till I see stuff that indicates what I should be putting things in down here. We'll leave it at that. Okay, that's good. Well, that didn't take long. Right, let's get out of here. Well, that was, that was well worth just coming in there for a little look around. Will you? So, there's a, actually, I think there's a lot to explore in here. We're going to come back, though, because I want, uh, I want Ifen first. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want to go out the other side of there as well to get to that, uh, I think that's where that cavern that little ravine thing comes down Sibyl oh she was on the uh, she was on the boat amid the squalor of Fort Joy you suddenly spot an elf with diamond features regal and radiant but cold too and sharper than any knife 
She was the one who sat rolling dice in the ship that went under, deciding fates with every roll. Or so she said. Her eyes are focused on a lizard some distance away. And you get the distinct feeling he's an unfortunate man indeed to be trapped in her tiger-like gaze. Ask her what a guy has to do to earn that stare. No sooner have these words left your mouth than she turns about <laughs> and grabs you in a stranglehold. You feel the tip of a long needle being pushed a little ways into your neck. <laughs> I think I've earned the stare. You caught me off guard. No one catches me off guard. Better tell me who you really are so I can decide your fate here and now. Hmm. I'll go with it. No, I'll go with the human thing. I'll go, take it easy. It wasn't my intention to startle you. But you did. And now the tables have turned. You look quite startled to me. A push, a pivot, and now you suddenly face her. The needle still all too deeply embedded in the side of your throat. Despite the precariousness of your situation, you notice something that remained undetected in the gloom of the ship. A flaw in her diamond features. A curiously shaped scar on her left cheek. How did you get that scar? Let me tell you a little story. Once upon a bad old time, a lizard cut this thing, this living scar, into my cheek. The mark of a slave. Oh, this explains a lot. But now I'm free, of sorts. And I've traced that lizard here to Fort Joy. I intend to raise the subject with him. Point out that you are not that lizard. She drives the needle in deeper and whispers. <laughs> in truth, it does not matter in the least who you really are. You saw me mark my prey. You could warn him, save him, or kill him before I get my chance. That makes you a liability. That makes you needle feed. Hmm, she's not quite as friendly as I expected her to be. Make her an offer. Instead of killing you, she could join you. A bright sparkle of laughter follows your proposal. Ha! <laughs> How amusing. I admit I had not seen that twist coming. I was certain the pitiful begging was about to begin. Make your case and do it quickly. Why should I join you? Hmm. Sooner or later, the Magisters will come for her. You'll not survive on your own. I will. I've seen Dallas. Who the hell is Dallas? Too sure of yourself. You should be thinking of teaming up. No, I'll go with this one. I don't know who she is, though. But I've seen Dallas at work. No one is safe here. And so you seek to escape. <laughs> How you do tickle me. Most of the misguided deers around here would argue such a thing is impossible. <laughs> Reminder you saved her from certain death back on that ship. Just saying. <laughs> well played. Oh, little needle mine. What should I do? Push or pull? Hmm, the agony of choice. You know what? Today is a rather fine day. Sunshine and an easy breeze. Yes, I'll let you live. I'll even agree to travel with you, provided we talk to that lizard I mentioned. I'm not quite sure the weather will save him. With a casual flick of the wrist, she withdraws the needle from your neck and smiles, as if she just invited you to sit down for tea. <laughs> this doesn't sound like the most trustworthy person to have in the party. Let's discuss our respective roles then, shall we? Sure, I'll have cheese and you can have ham. You, me and Death will be playing many a round of hide oh. and seek. So, what role would you like me to play? As a rogue, my speciality is stealth. The quick silence of the dagger striking unseen. That said, I'm perfectly lethal wielding any weapon or magic. A rogue so, is exactly the, the type of companion yours. we want. Suits me fine. Lead on, or better yet, let me take the lead. That settles it. Then follow me. But wait, you seem to have quite a few followers already. We'll be far too conspicuous traveling in a caravan like that. Return to me once you've culled a couple. Okay, I could, I could probably. T I don't know. Um, 